Will Europe ever accept that its only reason to partner with Africa is to exploit it? A brave European official finally could not keep the truth hidden. She exposed how Europe's partnership with Africa only aims to give Europe an edge to exploit and unapologetic. Uh, I voted for the report also. Uh, I'd like to compliment my left colleagues who acted as rapporteurs. There's a lot of really good stuff in it about safeguarding food sovereignty, preventing deforestation. This didn't surprise Africa, but seeing an official say this was a big deal for Europe. So, is she safe now? Or did she receive any threats from the state for speaking the truth? Let's find out. Finally, someone from Europe told the truth about Europe's partnership with Africa. A European MP said in a speech that all Europe does is exploit Africa. This brave lady fears no one. She mostly talked about trade exploitation. So, what specific issues did the European MP highlight regarding EU-Africa trade policies? Perpetuating exploitation by other means. Africa trades more with Europe than it does with itself. It's portrayed as a poor continent, but actually it's the richest. It's just that the people there are denied the fruits of their land and their... During their address, the European MP raised several critical issues concerning EU-Africa trade policies. Firstly, they acknowledge the positive aspects of a report to safeguard food sovereignty and prevent deforestation. However, the MP emphasized that these elements are insufficient to address the fundamental problem, the perpetuation of European colonialism through economic exploitation. According to the MP, despite portraying Africa as a continent in need of aid, it is, in reality, abundantly rich. They noted that Africa trades more with Europe than within itself indicating a significant imbalance in trade relations. This trade dynamic perpetuates dependency and inequality rather than fostering self-sufficiency and development within Africa. Furthermore, the MP highlighted the unequal economic relations between Europe and Africa. They pointed out that Africa's wealth is systematically siphoned away through unfair trade rules, illicit capital flights, and the unchecked influence of multinational corporations. These entities, empowered by Western capitals, exploit African resources and labor, dictating terms that perpetuate the continent's economic subjugation. The MP's speech also touched upon the failure of current EU-Africa trade policies to address the root causes of exploitation. While acknowledging the potential of certain policy measures to bring about change, they asserted that true transformation would necessitate a revolutionary shift in power dynamics. Mere adjustments to policy documents, the MP argued, would not suffice to dismantle entrenched systems of exploitation. But is it true that Africa is not that poor? How does portraying Africa as a continent needing assistance contrast with its wealth? The European MP's address shed light on the stark contrast between Africa's portrayal as a continent needing assistance and its wealth. Despite common narratives depicting Africa as impoverished and reliant on external aid, the MP asserted that the continent is, in fact, abundantly rich in resources. The portrayal of Africa as a continent needing assistance perpetuates a narrative of dependency and victimhood, reinforcing the notion of Africa as a passive recipient of aid rather than an active participant in global trade and economic relations. This narrative often overlooks Africa's vast reserves of natural resources, including minerals, oil, gas, and agricultural land, which have the potential to fuel economic growth and development. Contrary to the portrayal of Africa as a perpetual recipient of aid, the MP highlighted that Africa trades more with Europe than within itself. This trade imbalance underscores Africa's role as a significant contributor to the global economy, challenging the narrative of dependency and underscoring the continent's economic importance. Furthermore, the MP emphasized that external powers often exploit Africa's wealth for their gain rather than using it to benefit African nations and their people. Unfair trade rules, illicit capital flights, and the unchecked influence of multinational corporations contribute to the extraction of Africa's resources, perpetuating a cycle of exploitation and inequality. And what leads to the exploitation of Africa? What are the key factors contributing to Europe's economic exploitation of Africa? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, 
civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The European MPs address outlined several key factors contributing to the economic exploitation of Africa by Europe, shedding light on systemic issues that perpetuate inequality and dependency. Unequal economic relations, by unfair trade rules, by illicit capital flights into the Western banks, and by multinational corporations allowed off the leash by Washington, London, and Brussels. The first one is unfair trade rules. The MP pointed out that unfair trade rules favoring European interests facilitate Africa's economic exploitation. These rules often impose tariffs, quotas, and trade barriers that hinder Africa's ability to compete on equal footing in the global market. As a result, African nations are forced to accept unfavorable terms that prioritize the interests of European corporations and governments. Another significant factor the MP highlights is illicit capital flights from Africa to Western banks. The wealth generated from Africa's resources and labor is often siphoned off illegally, depriving African nations of much needed revenue for development. This capital flight further exacerbates economic inequality and perpetuates the cycle of exploitation. The unchecked influence of multinational corporations, backed by Western capitals, was also identified as a key contributor to Africa's economic exploitation. These corporations operate with impunity, extracting resources and exploiting labor in African countries without regard for environmental or social consequences. Their actions perpetuate inequality and undermine local economies, exacerbating the continent's economic subjugation. The MP highlighted the enduring legacy of colonialism as a fundamental factor driving Europe's economic exploitation of Africa. Historical injustices, including land dispossession, resource extraction, and forced labor, continue to shape power dynamics and economic relations between Europe and Africa. The remnants of colonialism manifest in unequal trade relations, skewed investment patterns, and the perpetuation of systems that prioritize European interests over African sovereignty and development. She also said that mere policy change is insufficient to end the exploitation, but why would she say so? The European MP's assertion that mere policy changes are insufficient to address the exploitation of Africa stems from a recognition of the entrenched and systemic nature of the problem. The MP contends that many policy changes proposed within the EU-Africa trade framework fail to address the root causes of exploitation. While certain measures may offer incremental improvements, they often do not challenge the underlying power dynamics perpetuating unequal relations between Europe and Africa. These changes are deemed inadequate in effecting meaningful and lasting transformation. The MP highlights the existence of entrenched systems of exploitation that transcend policy documents. These systems, rooted in historical injustices such as colonialism, continue to shape economic relations between Europe and Africa. Mere policy adjustments are seen as superficial attempts to address symptoms rather than confronting the structural inequalities that underpin exploitation. According to the MP, addressing the exploitation of Africa requires a revolutionary shift in power dynamics and economic structures. This shift goes beyond policy tweaks and necessitates fundamental changes in the distribution of wealth, resources, and decision-making processes. It requires challenging the dominance of Western capitals and multinational corporations in shaping Africa's economic landscape. The MP's suggestion that policy changes alone are insufficient highlights the need for structural transformation. This involves dismantling existing systems of exploitation and building alternative frameworks based on principles of justice, equity, and mutual benefit. Such transformation requires broader societal engagement and a commitment to addressing historical injustices and power imbalances. She kept mentioning the historical legacy. How does colonialism's historical legacy continue to shape EU-Africa relations today? The European MPs' address underscored colonialism's enduring influence on contemporary EU-Africa relations, highlighting several ways historical legacies continue to shape power dynamics and economic interactions. The MP emphasized that colonialism established a framework of unequal power dynamics between Europe and Africa, with European nations exerting dominance over African territories and resources. This historical subjugation laid the groundwork for the exploitation of Africa's wealth and labor, perpetuating a legacy of economic inequality and dependency. 
Colonial powers exploited Africa's natural resources for their benefit, often through coercive and exploitative means. This legacy of resource extraction continues to shape EU-Africa relations, with European corporations and governments seeking to access Africa's wealth of minerals, oil, gas, and agricultural land. The extraction of resources without equitable benefits for African nations perpetuates patterns of economic exploitation and undermines local development efforts. The MP pointed out that colonialism established trade patterns that favored European interests at the expense of African economies. Colonial powers established trade networks prioritizing exporting raw materials from Africa to Europe while importing manufactured goods back to the continent. This historical trade imbalance has persisted into the present day, with Africa often serving as a supplier of raw materials to European markets, reinforcing patterns of dependency and unequal exchange. The legacy of colonialism also extends to political structures and governance systems in Africa. Many African nations inherited colonial-era institutions and administrative frameworks that continue to shape political dynamics and governance practices. Through historical ties and ongoing political influence, European powers maintain significant sway over African governments and decision-making processes, impacting policy outcomes and economic relations. Here, the question comes, how does Europe make Africa dependent on it? The European MP's address outlined several specific mechanisms that contribute to the dependency of African nations on European markets, illuminating how these mechanisms perpetuate unequal trade relations and economic exploitation. One significant mechanism the MP highlights is the imposition of tariffs and trade barriers that hinder African nations' access to European markets. These barriers make it difficult for African products to compete on equal footing with European goods, limiting opportunities for African exporters and reinforcing dependency on European markets. The MP emphasized that many trade agreements between Europe and Africa are characterized by unequal terms that favor European interests. These agreements often prioritize the interests of European corporations and governments, imposing conditions that limit African nations' ability to protect their domestic industries and promote economic development. Another contributing factor to African dependency on European markets is the limited value addition within African economies. The extraction and export of raw materials without significant value addition processes mean that African nations miss out on the potential benefits of processing and manufacturing goods locally. This perpetuates a cycle of dependency on European markets for finished products and undermines efforts to build self-sustaining economies. The MP pointed out that historical trade patterns established during colonialism continue to shape dependency on European markets. These patterns prioritize exporting raw materials from Africa to Europe, perpetuating a reliance on European markets for economic growth and development. Additionally, importing manufactured goods from Europe further entrenches dependency by limiting the growth of domestic industries in Africa. Financial mechanisms, such as loans and aid, also contribute to African dependency on European markets. While presented as assistance, these financial instruments often come with conditions that require African nations to open up their markets to European goods and services, further deepening dependency and reinforcing unequal economic relations. And how do multinational corporations play a part in this? The European MPs address highlighted the role of multinational corporations and MNCs in exacerbating the exploitation of African resources and labor, shedding light on how these corporations contribute to and benefit from unequal economic relations. Multinational corporations often extract Africa's natural resources, including minerals, oil, gas, and agricultural products. This extraction is frequently done with little regard for environmental sustainability or the well-being of local communities. MNCs prioritize profit over social and environmental responsibility, leading to the degradation of ecosystems and the depletion of valuable resources in African countries. MNCs frequently exploit African labor, taking advantage of lax labor regulations and low wages to maximize their profits. Many corporations employ cheap labor practices, including unsafe working conditions, long hours, and minimal benefits to reduce production costs and increase profitability. This exploitation perpetuates cycles of poverty and marginalization among African workers, who often lack the power to demand fair wages and better working conditions. 
Another way MNCs exacerbate exploitation is through land grabbing, where corporations acquire large swaths for commercial, agricultural, or industrial purposes. This practice often involves the displacement of local communities and the loss of livelihoods for smallholder farmers. MNCs prioritize their interests over the rights and well-being of local populations, leading to social unrest and conflict in affected areas. Multinational corporations often use tax avoidance strategies to minimize their tax obligations in African countries. By shifting profits to low-tax jurisdictions and exploiting loopholes in tax laws, MNCs deprive African governments of much-needed revenue for public services and infrastructure development. This further exacerbates economic inequality and undermines the ability of African nations to invest in social programs and poverty alleviation initiatives. MNCs wield significant political influence in African countries, often leveraging their economic power to sway government policies and regulations in their favor. This influence enables corporations to secure favorable contracts, subsidies, and regulatory exemptions, further entrenching their dominance in key sectors of the economy. The collusion between MNCs and government officials undermines democratic governance and perpetuates corruption and cronyism. And how does this exploitation impact Africans? The European MPs' address highlighted the tangible human consequences of economic exploitation for African communities emphasizing the profound impact of unequal economic relations on the lives and well-being of ordinary people. Economic exploitation perpetuates poverty and exacerbates existing inequalities within African societies. Despite the continent's abundant natural resources, many African communities struggle with necessities such as clean water, healthcare, education, and adequate housing. The concentration of wealth in the hands of a few elites often facilitated by multinational corporations and corrupt government officials, widens the gap between the rich and the poor, leading to social unrest and instability. The extraction of natural resources and land grabbing by multinational corporations often result in the displacement of indigenous communities and smallholder farmers. Forced evictions disrupt traditional ways of life, undermine cultural identities, and deprive communities of their ancestral lands and livelihoods. Displaced populations are often left marginalized and vulnerable, with limited access to essential services and opportunities for economic advancement. Economic exploitation contributes to environmental degradation and ecological destruction in African countries. Large-scale resource extraction projects such as mining and industrial agriculture often result in deforestation, soil erosion, water pollution, and biodiversity loss. These environmental impacts have far-reaching consequences for local ecosystems and the health and well-being of communities that depend on them for survival, exacerbating food insecurity, water scarcity, and climate-related vulnerabilities. The MP highlighted the adverse health impacts of economic exploitation on African communities. Unsafe working conditions, exposure to hazardous chemicals, and lack of access to healthcare services contribute to high rates of occupational diseases, injuries, and premature deaths among workers in industries such as mining, agriculture, and manufacturing. Additionally, environmental pollution from industrial activities poses risks to public health, leading to respiratory diseases, waterborne illnesses, and other health complications among nearby populations. Economic exploitation often fuels social disruption and conflict within African communities. Land disputes, resource conflicts, and competition for scarce resources exacerbate tensions and divisions, leading to violence, displacement, and forced migration. The proliferation of armed groups and the militarization of resource-rich regions further escalate conflicts, exacerbating human suffering and hindering efforts to achieve peace and stability. But can the relations between Africa and Europe be shaped? The European MPs address highlighted the crucial role that civil society organizations, CSOs, and grassroots movements can play in reshaping EU-Africa relations. It highlighted their potential to drive transformative change and advocate for more equitable and sustainable policies. Civil society organizations and grassroots movements serve as vital platforms for amplifying the voices of marginalized communities and advocating for their rights and interests in EU-Africa relations. By mobilizing public support and raising awareness about the impacts of exploitation and injustice, 
These organizations can pressure policymakers to adopt more inclusive and responsive policies that prioritize the needs and aspirations of African peoples. CSOs and grassroots movements are critical in holding governments and multinational corporations accountable for their actions and policies in EU-Africa relations. Through research, advocacy campaigns, and legal action, these organizations can highlight corruption, human rights abuses, and environmental degradation and demand transparency, accountability, and justice for affected communities. Civil society organizations and grassroots movements have the power to build bridges of solidarity and foster collaboration between diverse stakeholders across Europe and Africa. These groups can strengthen advocacy efforts and amplify their collective impact in reshaping EU-Africa relations by forging alliances with like-minded organizations, social movements, and progressive policymakers. CSOs and grassroots movements are instrumental in promoting alternative models of development and cooperation that prioritize people-centered approaches and environmental sustainability. By advocating for fair trade, debt relief, and social justice, these organizations can challenge the dominant narrative of exploitation and advocate for policies that promote shared prosperity, mutual respect, and dignity for all. Perhaps most importantly, Civil society organizations and grassroots movements empower communities to assert their agency and demand a seat in EU-Africa relations. By building capacity, fostering leadership, and providing resources and support, these organizations enable communities to advocate for their rights, participate in decision-making processes, and shape policies that directly impact their lives and livelihoods. What steps are necessary to move towards a future of equitable trade relations and mutual foreign Europe and Africa? Several steps must be taken to address the systemic issues perpetuating inequality and exploitation in order for Europe and Africa to move towards a future of equitable trade relations and mutual benefit. The European MPs address outlined key actions that can help pave the way for a more just and sustainable economic partnership. Europe and African nations must prioritize reforming trade policies to ensure fairness, transparency, and mutual benefit. This includes revisiting existing trade agreements to address imbalances and inequities and negotiating new agreements that prioritize the interests of African economies and promote sustainable development. It is essential to empower African nations to assert their economic sovereignty and pursue development strategies that prioritize the well-being of their people. This may involve supporting efforts to strengthen domestic industries, promote value addition, and diversify economies away from reliance on raw material exports. Confronting the historical legacies of colonialism and exploitation is critical for building a more equitable future. Acknowledging past injustices, providing reparations where appropriate, and fostering reconciliation can help heal wounds and pave the way for more respectful and equitable relations between Europe and Africa. Holding governments, corporations, and other actors accountable for their actions is essential for promoting transparency, fairness, and justice in trade relations. This may involve strengthening regulatory frameworks, implementing mechanisms for monitoring and enforcement, and ensuring that all parties abide by international standards and norms, investing in sustainable development initiatives, prioritizing environmental conservation, social equity, and inclusive growth can help ensure that trade benefits all stakeholders. This includes supporting projects promoting renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, and inclusive economic development in Europe and Africa. Fostering dialogue and collaboration between European and African stakeholders is essential for building trust, promoting understanding, and identifying shared priorities and interests. This may involve convening multi-stakeholder forums, establishing joint working groups, and facilitating partnerships between governments, civil society, academia, and the private sector. Putting people at the center of trade policies and decision-making processes is crucial for ensuring that trade benefits are equitably distributed and shared. This requires prioritizing human rights, social justice, and community empowerment in trade in negotiations and policy formulation. Embracing solidarity and partnership between Europe and Africa can help foster a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. This means moving away from paternalistic attitudes and outdated stereotypes, 
and embracing a spirit of partnership based on shared values, mutual benefit, and collective responsibility. By taking these steps, Europe and Africa can work together to build a future of equitable trade relations and mutual benefit that promotes prosperity, sustainability, and dignity for all. This will require bold leadership, concerted action, and a commitment to justice and solidarity from all stakeholders. Do you think Africa and European relations can ever be based on mutual benefit? Should Africa give Europe another chance to get better? Let us know in the comments section if cutting off Europe would be better. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching. And until the next video, stay tuned. Video.